So this is Lee Cole. And uh, what we're looking at is uh, the first in a series of two webinars for, um, as a bonus for buying Jack, Jack Hopman's marvelous product, Maps Biz in a Box. And I want to introduce to you a new way to do offline marketing. Uh, let's just move in the next slide. I'll tell you what I'm up to, tell you what you're going to learn in this webinar, tell you what you're going to learn in the next webinar, and why this might be really, really worth your time. I mean, you already got Jack's thing, you know. I mean, th this is a bonus, right? You, you already got Jack's thing. So uh, so this is like extra cool stuff. So number one, thank you for purchasing that. Uh, Jack Hopman's one of my uh, good friends. I buy all of his stuff myself and use it in my own business. And I think, you know, he he's, he's in the trenches just as I am and his stuff really rocks. And I hope you really enjoyed that. And especially, I hope you actually put it to use. And um, so here's what you're learning in today's webinar. We're going to talk about a new painless way to prospect. Okay, who here, who here would like the idea of taking some of the pain out of prospecting? Just, just give me a yay or a nay, a yes or a no, a we oui or a no, a see si or a no, or a no. Yeah. Find clients and close sales. I mean, what if we could like back up some take the pain out of this to where our business, whether you're, some of you I know are just kind of like getting off the ground. Everybody has to get off the ground. Okay. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with anything. I'm just saying some of you are getting off the ground. Some of you have an ongoing business. Um, but I'm pretty sure that we would all agree that uh, if we could take some of the stress out of everything, that A, you would do what you're supposed to, what, what you really, really need to, i.e. the sales and marketing stuff, you would do that more if, you, if it was less stressful or if the thought of it were less stressful. And frankly, it would work better because uh, I'm actually preparing a presentation. I, I don't know if y'all got my email last week. I, I was invited to uh, be a speaker at a conference in Texas in San Antonio on May the 5th. And uh, this is a... a, a Oh, God, I'm having a senior moment. Jesus. Uh, Cliff Kerrigan's company, uh, Locustware, they, 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 they have a big internet marketing uh, conference on the Cinco de Mayo, the, the weekend of the 5th of May. And so, you know, I'm kind of like preparing stuff and thinking about it. And, um, you know, there's a massively huge difference because Cliff's audience is mainly like, straight line down the middle internet marketers have nothing to do with offline or selling to businesses or anything like that. Just, you know, uh, uh, basically trying to use technology to put a button somewhere that somebody clicks and they make money because that's what it boils down to. Nothing, I'm, I, I'm not dissing that. I, I, I think that's all great. I'm, I'm just pointing out that there's a vast, vast difference between that thing and offline marketing. And the vast difference is with offline marketing, you actually need, you actually have to interact with, I mean, there's always a human being who's making a decision before you get paid any money. There has to be, uh, unless you're like a, a burglar or something, you know, then it's nobody's <laughs> decision except for you, except you're going to get caught. But, you know, in a, in an economic exchange, there, there are always two people making a decision. One person makes the decision of, I'm going to give up this amount of money, which is nothing but crystallized value of their lives, because I want that item, that product, that uh, training, that software, that whatever. And the other person says, I'm going to give up, you know, whatever that thing is, because I want that value, right? In other words, economic transactions have to be, number one, a value for value exchange, but there always got to be two human beings. I mean, literally, if you could sell to yourself and become a multimillionaire, I, I, I would just do that all day long. I mean, why screw around with other people if, if you could just do it all by yourself? You know, a, a guy or a gal living on a desert island with nobody around who never meets anybody for the rest of eternity is not going to make any money. Now, they might not meet, need money. I, I don't know. That's a different issue, but they're never going to make any money. Money only occurs when two human, it takes two, two human beings make the decision to exchange stuff. Uh, in our world, one part of that, you know, one of those stuffs is money. The other 
of those stuffs is usually like 99.9999999% of the time is um, uh, other stuff, you know, that I mentioned. Well, and, and I, I know that's like, godly, why are you telling me that? That's so obvious. This is so kindergarten. Well, A, I've got a kindergarten mind, which is why I'm successful, frankly. But B, if the other, if there have to be two individuals making a decision, you have already made the decision that you want to sell whatever it is you're selling. I mean, here we're talking about Google Maps type stuff. stuff. You've already made the decision, hey, I've got this product, I've got this service, I've got, you know, I can do this thing, okay, so that's a service. I can do this thing for businesses. That's the thing that I'm exchanging. Well, in order for you to make money out of that, you've got to, hey, you, you, there's some things that got to happen. Number one, you've got to go out and find somebody who might be interested, maybe, in exchanging their cash for the thing you're selling, right? And B, uh, you've got to, the, the, the word convince is really wrong because done right, it's really not a matter of convincing. But let's use the word convince so we can move on. But B, you've got to convince them that, hey, you know, this thing I'm selling is going to solve some kind of need for you. You know, they're in the, in, in, in the market and in, in the sales world, it's called features and benefits. That this thing I'm selling, this thing I'm exchanging with you is going to solve some kind of need. Otherwise, why would they want it if it's going to do nothing, right? And, uh, you know, it's not, it's worth more to you than X amount of cash. So, so that means there's a human interaction going on. OK, so unlike uh, strict offline marketing where, you know, you're using technology, putting on websites, uh, Cliff does a lot of video marketing uh, to drive traffic to various things. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a giant technological numbers game. And then there's a lot of there's a massive amount of skill in that. And it, it all works and all that stuff. And what we do. Technology only takes you so far. Actually, technology does not take you very far at all. OK, now technology may be the understanding of technology, you know, all that stuff, the stuff, you know, about Google Maps. Right. Uh, that's technology and that's part of what you're selling. But the selling process itself is like five percent technology. And here this next part, 95 percent good old fashioned sales skill. So that makes offline marketing for a lot of people really hard. Because, uh, you know, you just hadn't got the sales skill yet. Or, or maybe you've got the sales skill, you just don't know how really to implement it. I mean, every human being on the planet is, is a salesperson in many situations. Uh, I have one married couple on here that I know of, okay? Well, somebody sold somebody on something, all right? I mean, you are a salesperson. There was, there's, and, and I'm, I'm, I've been married for 36 years now. So there's a value for value exchange every day, right? So, and that is selling. But, you know, the, we don't really look at, uh, you know, romantic stuff as selling, but it's selling just like uh, business is selling. So everybody can sell. You just got to learn how, you just got to learn what you're doing and learn how to channel that into a business situation so that you can take your product, your service, and exchange it with someone else for their money. Okay. So hopefully what I want to do in these two webinars is I want to give you a little more painless way of doing that because uh, uh, sales is by its very nature, you know, talking, I, I don't care. I, I am not an extrovert, like not, like in a capital N, capital O, capital T. Uh, I am happiest uh, I mean, I'm an only child, okay? So so I, I am totally happiest when I'm just like all alone and there's no human being in sight and I'm doing whatever I'm doing, you know, taking a walk or, or whatever, you know, working out at the gym or whatever. I mean, there can be humans there, but uh, I'm not talking to anybody. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm a misanthrope. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, that that's my natural state. So, but yet I'm a really good salesman because I understand these skills and whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, like, like, like you could be uh, uh, Mr. and Ms. Party all the time, right? Extrovert type person. Um, 
And you would think that sales would be easy for those people. No, sales is never easy because anytime that you're you're talking to another human being, you know, there's stress. It's just the way we're made, right? There is stress in dealing with other human beings. I mean, you know, get in your car and go drive somewhere and, and you will feel the stress. There are people pulling out in front of you, people blowing their horns and doing all that stuff, right? I mean, it's, it's just stressful. So if we could take some of that stress out of it and, 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 and just sort of de-stress that thing and also come up with a um, more repeatable, easier, simpler way of doing this, then I think that would help a lot. And, and this, what I'm about to share with you on this webinar, on this, this is the qualitative webinar and the webinar next week is more of the quantitative webinar. This webinar is the big idea and the webinar next week is more of the details about how to, what you need to do to actually do it. So, um, yeah, exactly. Uh, new painless way to prospect, find clients and close sales, because if we can get it down to where it's less stressful, if we can get it down to where it's more repeatable, if we can get it down to where it's more of a, uh, this is just a term I coined many, many years ago, a mindless science. Okay. In other words, a science, I know what to do. I know the steps, mindless. I don't have to think about it anymore. If we get it down to that, then a bunch of stuff's going to happen. Uh, your business is going to get off the ground. Your business is going to grow. And especially your business is going to start to be outsourceable and repeatable. And uh, this leads to you getting more recurring income clients. So with that said, So let's talk about the system and what are the benefits. And I, I, I may have gotten ahead of myself a little bit, but let's, because uh, I'm just, as always, I'm, I'm super excited about teaching you guys stuff. I mean, I, I, I literally live for talking about how to sell offline stuff. It's, it's crazy. I'm weird. But anyway, benefits of this, making prospecting easier. We're going to talk about nurturing clients. In other words, letting clients come to us. And we're going to up your conversion rate. I mean, think about it like this. If you're on, uh, if you're, you're on two sales presentations, I don't care where you are. You could be sitting in a couple of folks' office uh, or, or two different offices of two different people. You could be on the phone. You could be on a Zoom chat, which I highly recommend. Um, if you're talking to someone that you went out and found and convinced that the thing that you're selling is really cool and convinced, yeah, let's get on a sales presentation. I'm, I'm, I mean, you're not going to twist people's arms. I mean, I, I hope to God that you're over the used car, uh, sort of, uh, not that you ever had it, but it's sort of a, uh, stereotype of salespeople because a, it's not true. I mean, it might may be true for a used car lot, okay? But A, it's not true, and B, it's just stupid, all right? So I hope you're over that. So, so, so we're not talking about arm twisting. Uh, we're talking about, you know, the person, our prospect along this path of finding them, uh, sending them some information, convincing them to, you know, get on a little chat with us to see if this is the right thing for them, get them on sales presentation, do the sales presentation, close them. Um if it was never there, if they were never looking for this, but it turns out they needed it, that sale, that sales path is going to be psychologically more difficult than the than the next sales path, which is somebody's, uh, and again, you know, we have to do work to put our message in front of the right audience called advertising. But, uh, you know, somebody uh, sees our marketing message and they decide to choose us, right? They decide that, yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I've read that. Ooh, I really want to talk to that person. I mean, who here besides me has ever, um, think about it like this. And, and you know, I, I know I'm late. I'm, I know I'm sorry, laboring on this, but, but, but it's the de it's the psychological details that make all this work. Okay. Who here has ever had a home appliance break besides me? Actually, the compressor on my air conditioner just broke, which which is like yesterday. <laughs> I had a guy come out and look at it today. Yeah, obviously. So let's say, Nick, that you had your, <clears throat> oh, I don't know, dishwasher break, right? 
And you consider a dishwasher a necessity. I mean, I consider a dishwasher a necessity. So what do you do? I mean, uh, well, you could do one of many things, but uh, one thing you could do is get in the car, go to the store, and walk into the, uh, go to the appliance store, right? And uh, like home appliance part of Home Depot or something. Nick, I don't know what country you're in, but uh, appliance part of Home Depot. And um, you walk to where they had dishwashers and you, uh, <laughs> yeah, I used to do that too. And then that, that Nick says, I try to fix it myself. If it fails, I get a technician. I used to do that. Then, that, then I wised up and realized that my money was, uh, that my time was worth more than my money. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so you go to the appliance part of Home Depot. Hang, hang on a minute. Sorry, I had a little call. So you go to the appliance part of Home Depot and you walk in and, you know, nice person comes over and, you know, they're, they're very helpful. They show you dishwashers and stuff. That's a pretty easy sale, guys, right? Isn't that a pretty easy sale for, the, for Home Depot? I mean, you're there. You really want it. You may be price shopping or you may be looking at features, but that's a pretty easy sale. I mean, who, who wants to go to 15? Yeah, there's some people that do this, but who wants to go to 15 stores? spend a week looking at 20 different dishwashers, have to wash your damn dishes all by yourself. I mean, not many people want to do that, right? I mean, you basically go to the store, you know, because you have real needs. So from the store's point of view, see, you are the store. You and your business are the Home Depot. You're the store. From the store's point of view, when you walk in the door, you have a need and they got a bunch of products and they got a good reputation. And you, you know, there, there's some trust built up there, right? And, um, I mean, it really is at that point from their point of view, it's not really making a sale. It's not screwing up the sale in progress, right? Does that make sense to you guys that that from Home Depot's, eh, Depot, Jesus, from Home Depot's point of view, their deal is not making the sale. It's just not screwing up the sale in progress. It's so important that you understand that. Because those are like wildly different things. Yes, no, maybe? Okay. So if we can basically get more people like Nick, uh, who's going to the store to buy a dishwasher, just using you as an example, Nick, if we get more people like that coming to you, choosing at some point to walk into your store is what I'm saying. We'll get more people to do that. Then really... All you got to do is not screw up the sale. And this doesn't mean you're going to close 100% of them. That's obviously not true. You know, especially when you're selling something like Google Maps. I mean, everybody has a dishwasher, but not all businesses have Google Maps. And, you know, they may be like 80% uh, into the idea. And maybe, you know, you never know, right? But it's going to massively up your conversion rate. If we can get more people moving down the line of I'm choosing you, psychologically they're thinking i'm pete i'm going to use you as an example psychologically they're thinking well i'm talking to pete because i read a couple of his emails and uh, i really like what he has to say and uh you know i know we've been needing this and i'm choosing him right i'm here on this zoom thing because i chose pete and uh now pete's telling me all this stuff and this is so incredibly important who here I, I, I never bring up politics with anyone, <laughs> but I especially never bring up politics in business and I never bring it up on webinars and I'm not bringing it up now, but, and I know that in America we, we, we're like really polarized and, 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 I, and I think from what I've heard from many of my UK friends, there's, but believe me, Nick, it takes some dancing around not to do that, you bet. But, uh, you know, I believe in the UK, y'all have kind of like your version of our polarization. And, um, and let's say that you have a certain set of beliefs, okay, whether you do or not, just, just play along with me here. Most people do nowadays. Let's say you have a certain set of beliefs, like you're, um, you know, a Democrat or Republican, or you're, God knows, this is going to show my ignorance. What do you call it in the UK? the conservatives, conservatives, Tories. Did, did I just make an utter idiot out of myself? Probably. Uh, 
Tory or Labor. Yeah, Tory or Labor. Okay, so in the United States, it's Republican or Democrat. And in the UK, thank you, Pete. In the UK, it's, uh, you know, Tory conservatives on one side, Labor on the other side, right? Okay, so the, the, the Labor being the Democrat side. So have you ever yourself or known of anyone who, through a simple conversation, convinced anyone else to change sides? Have you ever done that? Number one, let me, let me just ask you that question. Yeah, absolutely impossible, really. I mean, you would have to like drive a, a silver stake through their heart or something nowadays, right? I mean, people are just like way on the other side or way on the, you know, one side or the other. And then they just think the other side is just a bunch of idiots, right? Um, and have you noticed that when you're talking with people of a certain persuasion that perhaps you share, let's say that you were both uh, conservatives, okay? And you know, you, you're, you're like talking and you kind of discover you're both conservatives. And then what do you do during that conversation? You start validating each other's positions, you know, uh, like, like, like conservatives, so Republicans, okay, let's say you're Republican. Th then you start talking about the Democrats and, you know, how they want to raise taxes and how Obamacare screwed up everything. And everybody nods up and down and says yes. And everybody's really happy and they just all know they're right. And for all I know, they may be right. I'm not saying that, but, but they, they, they all think they're right. And everybody just, this is why we're polarized because social media just makes this process happen almost instantaneously on a global scale. But, you know, every, everybody just starts people. My, my point is people love it. They absolutely love it when you agree with their position and you give them evidence to further bolster their position, right? So let's take that psychology and let's move it back into sales. So Home Depot not screwing up the sale. Your prospects choosing you, and now they're on a Zoom um, thing, you know, on, on a Zoom conference with you, and your goal is to not screw up the sale in progress. So everything that you tell them, they chose you. Everything that you tell them, they're nodding up and down. And all the good stuff about what this is going to do, they're nodding up and down. And uh, how cool this thingamabob is. They're nodding up and down. And, oh, you don't have this on your website. Well, we can fix that. And they're nodding up and down because all you're doing, you're, you're doing in a business situation exactly what happens in the political situation when people of the same persuasion get together and they all talk and they all bolster their same opinion and they all nod up and down and they all think that they're Einstein, right? See what I'm saying? That's what I mean by not screwing up the sale. God, I just thought of something. I had the greatest sales trainers like, you know, 25 years ago. Um, I mean, a bunch of them, a guy named Mike Ferry. That's different, Nick. Can you save that for Q&A? That is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful comment. I want to save that to Q &A for Q&A because I can uh, probably, I mean, you may already understand why they're doing that, but, 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 but I can probably um, at least talk about it and, and give you some ideas. Um, and another one was a guy named Jerry Vass who owned a corporate training company and he had a partner, Iris, um, uh, um, God, Iris, I can't remember her last name, started with an H. I mean, I would be able to remember her last name if I weren't trying to, but, um, uh, I actually found Jerry online and, um, uh, he, Iris, um, is so, somewhat older than me, but, but, but still kicking and, he actually contacted her and she remembered me from, uh, you know, 25 years ago, right? And um, one of the most beautiful things that Iris ever told me was, um, and, and, and this, this feeds into this, right? Uh, whenever your prospect says something, and th this has nothing, this has everything to do with the webinar, but it's not on a slide. So uh, write it down and maybe someday I will do a webinar about this. Whenever your prospect says something that is a positive assertion for your case. Your case being, I'm going to sell you this thing, you're going to give me money, right? Okay, so so whenever they say, uh, hey, that's a good idea, 
you know, you, you point out, you know, you don't even have this on your website. Oh, I don't. Ooh. Well, Pete, I think it'd probably be a good idea if I had that on my website. When, whenever your prospect says something that affirms your case, next thing out of your mouth is you need to say you're absolutely right. Okay. You're absolutely right. And again, all we're doing is we're feeding into that natural human need of being right. I mean, human beings have a, I mean, we, we, we have a almost narcissistic need to be right all the time, all of us. Okay. So all we're doing is just aligning your cell psychology with the way the human brain works so that you make more sales. So we're going to fix it so that uh, people choose you, choose you and you don't screw up the sale. Okay. And another huge benefit of doing this, the, the way I'm outlining today, again, today's the outline next week is more details. Cause, cause we, we do need to get a little technology that you may or may not have. I, I'm, I'm suspecting that many, if not most of you don't have what I'm going to talk about and what I'm really going to talk about next week. But we need to get a little more technology in on this thing. But another benefit of this whole approach is it's going to even out your sales. You're going to get a more sales. You're going to get more sales in a more even way. And done right, you're going to end up with more uh, recurring income. And recurring income, guys, is a really, really cool thing because, you know, I don't know how much money you need. Uh, I personally need a just massive truck ton of money for whatever reason. It just is. But uh, I mean, so, 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 so I'm not saying this is like the magic number. I'm just using a number. So let's say you had uh, your average recurring income client was paying you $1,500 a month. Done right, that's probably slightly on the low side. You realize you'd only need... Uh, like 13 of those or I'm doing like super quick math incorrectly in my head. You'd only need like 13 of those to make $150,000 a year. Kind of adds up, right? See what I'm saying? So in general, we're talking about, and again, the, this week is the qualitative. Next week is the quantitative. In general, you're going to be doing the following. This is key. Because this is takes so much of the stress out of the selling and it also prospecting and selling are two different things, okay, fundamentally. Selling is more akin to, it's not exactly like it, but selling is more akin to persuasion and prospecting really has nothing to do with persuasion. Prospecting is sorting. So if you had a big, um, if you had a big bowl full of multicolored marbles, let's say you had a bowl and the top of the bowl was covered and there was just a little hole in it that you really couldn't see through, big enough to put your arm in. And uh, you can only take one marble out of the bowl at a time and there are all these colors and there's one blue one and you get paid a hundred dollars whenever you pull out the blue one whether it's the first one you get paid a hundred bucks now you're done with the bowl or the last one you get paid a hundred bucks now you're done with the bowl or if you you know pull out the third the third one then you get your hundred bucks and move on that is prospecting that's what i mean by sorting a lot of people like put way too, like, you know, I'm all close to 100% of people put way too much stress on, pro way too much selling stress on the prospecting phase. Now, all that does is just make you nervous and, and, and they just add so much stress. And, and believe me, whoever, who's ever receiving your marketing message is picking up on that. Okay, so prospecting needs to be sorting. It needs to be stick your hand in the bowl. Oh, black marble. Put it down. Stick your hand in the bowl. Wow, crap. Green marble. Put it down. Stick your hand in the bowl. Red marble. Put it down. Stick your hand in the bowl. Bingo. Blue marble. And prospecting needs to be uh, 
does this person, uh, is this person interested in your marketing message? No, they're not. Person B interested in your marketing message? No, they're not. Person C interested in their marketing message? No, they're not. Person D interested in your marketing message? Yeah, they're actually interested. Okay. You get prospecting down to down to that. That's the way you need to prospect. Why? Because a whole ton of stuff is going to happen. You're going to do a lot more prospecting. You're, you're, you're going to have a lot more units of prospecting. A unit of prospecting would be, let's say, uh, uh, a marketing message that is actually viewed by a human being. That would be a unit of prospecting. So you're going to have more units of prospecting per unit time, per hour, per day, per week, however you want to measure it. And uh, you are going to do a whole lot more of that. And then the stuff that falls out are going to be people who, uh, hey, they're actually are. They, they, they're at least interested enough to hear what you say. Again, it doesn't mean they're going to buy, but they're interested enough to hear what you say. And if you do it right, then all you got to do is not screw up the sale. You don't have to sell anymore. You don't have to be big, Mr. or Mrs. Big Convincer anymore. You just got to not screw up the sale. So prospecting not to make a sale, but to get people on a list. Hello. So you go to a bunch of network meetings, which I highly recommend. I, I know some of y'all have real life, honest to God, I got to leave home at eight in the morning and come home at eight at night jobs. And it's difficult to get to a network meeting. There are a few on the weekend and you should seek those out and go to them. But uh, if you go to network meetings with the idea of, okay, go, go to two different network meetings. Okay, let's say they both have 20 people in them. E each one has 20 people in them. And so you go to network meeting A with the idea of, I'm going to walk in, I'm going to get 20 business cards, I'm going to introduce myself, I'm going to look sharp, I'm going to smile, I'm going to nod up and down, I'm going to li really listen to what other people have to say. I'm going to say thank you very much. I'm going to come home. I'm going to uh, either enter those cards manually into my autoresponder. I'm going to get one of those little scanner things at uh, uh, Home Depot or, or, or Office Depot or whatever, an office supply store, uh, and uh, get all those names entered into my uh, um, uh, autoresponder, and then I'm going to let it be that. that. That is prospecting. Or I go to meeting B and my goal is to walk out of that meeting or if not walk out of that meeting, then at least after a couple of follow ups with uh, three or four people, my goal is going to get one of those people sitting down to a sales presentation. So which is I know which one's more stressful, obviously, but let me ask you, which is more stressful, A or B? Plan A or plan B? Yeah. And to be honest here. Which one are you going to do more of? Unless you're just insane, like me. <laughs> but 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 there's no sense in beating yourself up and doing a whole lot more B, right? I mean, you're going to do a whole heck of a lot more of A. And so then done like that, going to a network meeting kind of turns into like a no-brainer, right? It's just, I mean, look, okay, so I live in a city of uh, six, six million, six and a half million people. Um uh, um, God, I'm watching the Olympics, you know, and how Norway's winning all these medals. And I looked up the population of Norway. <laughs> there are fewer Norwegians than there are people who live in Metro Atlanta. This totally blows my mind. But I live in a city of six million people, right? And, uh, you know, to go to a network meeting is a half a day, right? You know, I get there 45 minutes, 30 minutes to get there. And then you have an hour or two there. And then you get in the car, you come home another hour. And then it's lunchtime or if it's a morning or, you know, whatever. I mean, it's a half a day, right? But what if you just decided to like go, what, what if you had, so forget, don't forget forever, but forget for the second what happens after they get on the uh, uh, email list, because uh, that's really what we're talking about here. But let's say that your job, let's say that you went to work for me. Okay, so Nick, I'm going to use you as an example. Nick, guess what? You're going to work for me, and uh, you're now my employee, and you are my lead. Uh, you're not really a salesperson, but but you're my lead front end guy on sales. And Nick, guess what you're doing? You're going to two network meetings a, a day. Yes, sir. You're going to ten network meetings a week. And but hey, guys, guys, guys. 
People that run businesses have people that do that. No joke. I mean, I meet them all the time in network meetings. <clears throat> but you go to 10 network meetings a week. You're going to hit one up in the morning. You're going to eat lunch somewhere. You're going to hit one up in the afternoon. You're going to bring all your cards back. You're going to put them through a little scatter bob And we're going to let the magic happen after that. Uh, most network meetings that I go to have, um, God, I, th I think the smallest one would be like 10. Sometimes they got 20 or 30 people in there. If you, okay, most, not everybody. I, I realize that there's some of y'all on this call who live out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so, so instead of network meetings, let's say you got on LinkedIn. Let, let's say um, someone who lives out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, let me look at the attendees because, because some of you, I know quite well. And I don't see anybody that I know who I know for sure lives out in the middle of nowhere, right? It's not nowhere. It's really somewhere. It just didn't have a lot of people in it. But let's say that you, you can't go to a bunch of network meetings. Or you can sure as heck get your butt on LinkedIn four hours in the morning and then eat lunch and then get your butt back on LinkedIn four hours in the afternoon. Okay, I want to tell you a, a kind of a sobering thought. I want you to answer yes or no to this. If that was your job and you worked for me and you wanted to keep your job, do you think you would prospect that much for me? I mean, y'all know my, my, I mean, you got my personality, right? Because <laughs> if you didn't, man, I would fire you in a New York second. I mean, you would be gone so fast. I mean, the door would not hit you in the butt on the way out of the building, right? I, 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 I would have you perp walked <laughs> out of the office. Why aren't you treating your own business like that? Ooh, there, that one hurt. I mean, seriously. I mean, if you went to a job and your job was front end salesperson, okay, you're the person creating the leads for the business. My dad, I mean, I, you know, I, I've watched this stuff ever since I was a little kid. I mean, this is originally how I learned it. My dad, uh, when I was a little kid, uh, had a phone room. Um, uh, no, they were not selling, uh, uh, they were not pumping up stocks or anything. I mean, this is legit. But he had a phone room. And he had like, I don't know, it seemed big to me. 20 women, I mean, look, this is back in the 60s, you know, this is more of a woman's job at the time, <clears throat> which may or may not be right. I'm not talking about those issues. But um, he had like 20 women in there, and these women arrived at work at 9, left at 5. They had 30 minutes for lunch. Hey, Gary, you, you're good. We're recording it. They had, uh, Gary, this is a bonus webinar. So once I record it, I'm popping it up on YouTube, but I have no way of getting it to, to you guys as an audience, uh, uh, just you. So Gary, if you'd hit me up and support, I'd be happy to send you the link. So they would arrive at nine. They have like 30 minutes for lunch. I mean, yeah, they get up and go pee and all that stuff. And then they would leave at five and the whole freaking time. You know what they did? This is like the 60s. This is way back before the do not call list, which happened like in the late 90s. They would be prospecting. They were the front end salespeople. They made outbound phone calls. Now you can't really, I mean, you can to businesses in the United States. I have no idea what you can do in the UK. You, you can to business. And I have no idea what you can do in Canada, but you can in the United States. But do you think that uh, one of those ladies that worked for my dad would have been able to like do two hours of phone dialing a day and get paid for eight? Do you think that would have worked? No. My dad was a much nice, I mean, my dad's the sweetest guy in the world. He was a little more tolerant than I am about things like that. So they might not have been perp walked out of the building, but they would have gotten sacked pretty fast. Okay. So my question is, you own your own business now. Okay, I don't care whether your whether your revenue is zero or whether it's like you know a quarter million dollars a year or five hundred thousand dollars a year or a million dollars a year. I could care less. But you own your own business now, and for most of your you you are a head cook and bottle washer, i.e., you do everything, which means you do the prospecting. So why in the hell aren't you prospecting? Somebody want to? 
I mean, some some of you are. I I, I know that some of you are. But those who the, uh, who aren't, you want to defend that? <laughs> I don't think you can. So, but now it's even easier, and and now we've got a game plan. I'm I'm, I'm not anywhere near done. Now we got a game plan, and you're going to be prospecting. Not to make a sale, but you're going to be doing the same thing those ladies were doing in my dad's phone room for his business. You're going to be prospecting to find what we actually do call in the sales business. This word, I got over my emotions about this word a while back, but this word has changed. It's called a lead in the business world. Okay. Now in the, uh uh-huh, Nick, thank you. That's question number two. I need you to ask me at the end because that is so important because I look, Nick, I'm like a lawyer. I don't ask questions in court. I, I don't ask questions that I already don't know the answer to. Right. I already know the answer to this. But uh, yeah, I know that's why. So let's deal with that. So uh, Nick said, by the way, probably not sure how to handle the actual sales process. Okay. I mean, it's totally fair. In other words, I'm not prospecting because I don't know what to do next when I get a live one. Right. I mean, why throw my hook in the water when I don't know how to reel in the, the damn reel? It makes total sense. So prospecting not to make sale, but get people on a list is creating a lead. Now I know that in the internet marketing world, uh, and I use this word too, when I write emails, because apparently the definition of the word changed, but guys, a lead is not somebody's email. That is not a lead. Okay. That is not a lead in the sales world. And I know that, you know, people say, Hey, buy the scraper software and you'll get all the leads you can deal with and all that stuff. Those aren't leads. And the scraper software is probably wonderful. And all those emails, if you know what to do, them are super wonderful and it's all cool, except the, the lingo is screwed up. That's not a lead. A lead is someone who is interested enough. Hear this. A lead is someone who is interested enough to hear more of your sales message. That's what a lead is. Just someone that not that they may not buy. Matter of fact, the majority of them never will buy. They may not buy, but they're nodding up and down enough to say, yeah, tell me more. That's a lead. The other people who do not nod up and down and say, yeah, tell me more. Those aren't leads and those you drop like a hot rock. They're a big waste of time. All right. So we're going to talk about prospecting, not to make a sale, but to get people on a list because we really want our list to do more of the sorting for us. Okay. And this is how we're going to do it. And we're going to talk about this. This is where I want to really get into a few more details next week. And I'll show you some stuff online. You're going to really need a different kind of autoresponder from AWeber, get response and all that stuff. And so that you can track what's called engagement. All right. So you can track what's called engagement. We get, get people on a list. We're going to email them stuff. And we're going to track their engagement. All right. And that way we can start to sort out that this is letting out. Here's where we got a little technology. This is where we let technology help us with our prospecting. Remember, prospecting is not selling. Prospecting is sorting. We're trying to reach our hand in the bowl and we keep pulling out marbles until we get a blue one so that we can get our hundred bucks. And we're going to use emails to differentiate those who are engaged from those who are not. And we're going to follow up with the engaged ones only in a bunch of different ways. Now, look at the beauty. And, and, and again, this, this week's the 30,000 foot overview. This is the big idea. Next week's going to be a few details. I mean, they, look, look, at it is a bonus webinar. It's not like you pay $200 for coaching. But, you know, I always over deliver. And my bonus webinars, I think, are gosh, probably better than 90% of the products y'all buy. That may just be my giant ego speaking, but I'm pretty sure that's true. But anyway, now think about this. So we're prospecting not to make a sale, but to get people on the list. I go to one network meeting a day. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Nick says I'm giving good insights. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, this is a head thing, Nick. This is a, look, you guys, you cannot hit the target unless you are facing it. Unless you're Annie Oakley, <laughs> who could apparently shoot backwards. But that's probably, you know, I mean, it's probably true, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there was a little more going on there than just pointing the gun behind you and pulling the trigger, right? 
But I mean, in general, you're not hitting the target unless you're facing it. I'm trying to get you pointed toward the target. That's what this week is. That's generally, that's what this what I wanted these two bonus webinars to be. So you live in a town with a whole bunch of people. And you have access to transportation, okay? So I know if you live in like London and you have to use the, the, uh, I'm going to try it, tube, and uh, uh, to go everywhere, then okay. So maybe you can't go to two network meetings a day. I got it because it, you know, pub, I mean, you know, in New York, I've been on major public transportation in two places, New York and Paris. I mean, it just takes some time, right? And uh, uh, you know, so. Maybe you go to one, but you go to a hell of a lot more than you're going to right now. Just a hell of a lot more. Because your one goal is to pick up business cards, shake a hand, have a smile, look as close to you can as close as you can get to a million bucks. Look like a player, okay? In the good sense. And uh, make a good first impression. Take the business card, take it home, and put the email on an email list. That's your goal. Okay. So we're, we're going to get to Nick's question in a minute, uh, Nick's how to handle the sales process question in a second. But Nick, again, if Nick were working for me and Nick was like those women in my dad's phone room, all Nick has to do is get his butt out of the house in the morning, into the car, on the tube, on the metro, on the subway, whatever it is. Okay. Go to network meeting in the morning, press the flesh, collect the business card, stop by somewhere for a quick lunch, hit his next network network meeting, come home, pop him in the thing, and he's got 60 more names. 60, hello, times five, because you're doing this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's 300. Okay, somebody want to multiply that by about, I mean, they're at what, average uh, 20, 20 days in a month, business days, I'm guessing, right? Four times five-ish, so 2022. Let's use 20. God, what number was I up to? Um, I was up to, uh, um, well, let's start over. 20 a meeting, two meetings, uh, two meetings a day, 40 per day times five is 200 times 20 is, is that 4,000? Did I get to 4,000, guys? Somebody, somebody say, yeah, Lee, you did your math right. Because, look, I'm running a webinar. I'm talking to Blue Streak. And I, okay, thank you, Gary. My wife does not let me make a tip at a restaurant. So, you know, even though I used to teach ma mathematics, I mean, doing calculus is easy for me. Doing Applying 20 times 2 times 5 times 20 is <laughs> a little above my pay grade. But anyway, 4,000 a month? Somebody want to multiply that by 12? How about 48,000? Jesus Christ, do you realize what would happen to your business if you had 48,000 emails in your autoresponder? Given that you knew what to do with them, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that in a little bit. Somebody tell me what would happen to your business if you had 48 effing emails in your autoresponder. Was it 48? Yeah. One email is 840 a day. One month is 40 per day. No, 40 per day times five is 200. Liam, 40 per day times five is 200. Liam, yes or no? Liam's scaring me because he told me my math was right. Thank you, Pete. Pete says my maths. That, that, that's, that's British for math. Pete says my maths is right. Yeah, there, there we go. There we go. Yeah, Liam, awesome buddy. There, 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 there we go. We're on the same page. Forty-eight thousand. Oh, Gary's got a good one. Let's say each contact is worth a buck per month. Yeah. Look and and look, guys. Out of the forty-eight thousand, most of those people will never buy anything from you. And who gives a rat's you know what? Because we're after the ones that do. But out of 48,000 people, do you think that you might be able to build a business? I don't care if you're selling weak old dog poop. I mean, you know, you're going to have some people buy just because it's new and different. See what I'm saying, guys? This is where we get 
common sense selling, this is where we get really what turns out to be extremely high level psychology. Okay, because we're no longer swimming against the stream with with the prospect psychology. Okay, so Carl says it's uh, ten thousand. Okay, so you know, uh, but just another uh, guys, it's big. Would you agree with me that it's big? Thank you, Carl. Okay, ninety six thousand. Whatever. I don't care if it's forty eight thousand or ten thousand or ninety six thousand. I mean, I mean, if you had, God knows, if you had two thousand. 2,000. It's huge. Okay. So, so whatever it is, it's giant, enormous, and big. So really, all really what I'm trying to do in these two webinars is I'm trying to get your head straight so that you start to think about letting high level psychology, cell psychology, what you get from me, because I've been studying this stuff for like literally years. I grew up in it. I keep getting so many tell me people tell me so many things. Okay, let's agree that I mean it's all good. I'm probably did the math wrong because I'm all excited and everything, and and my wife won't let me make a tip. Thank you, Randy. But let's agree that it's would would we agree that it's a bunch? Like, um, would we agree that after a year? I don't I don't mean you're not going to make any money for a year, but we would we agree that if you did this religiously, like this was your freaking job, and you did this religiously for a year. Would we agree that at the end of the year, you would have enough emails in your autoresponder, highly likely that there's a high probability that you would have enough emails in your autoresponder that you didn't need to do this anymore for a very long time. That's your business right there, those emails, right? Just think about every email, just think about every email in your autoresponder. Every email in your autoresponder now, using the network market and network marketing, Jesus, using the networking idea. Okay, the network, and we'll talk about LinkedIn in a minute. I'll, I'll talk about online prospecting in a second, but you know, I'm, I'm hesitating on that because I know some of y'all are going to wimp out and not leave your house and just pretend you can do it all online, which you can. But I'm going to tell you uh, what might be not 100% right with that idea. So, let's go with the network uh, network meeting idea. Uh, if you did this religiously, you can and can't screw it up. I mean, honestly, you could be the worst salesperson on the planet, literally. And if you talk to enough people, you're going to make sales and you're going to close deals because you're going to every now and then hit that blue marble. That is somebody who wants it so bad there and, and needs it so bad. And we're talking about Google My Business stuff. That is something that people need. We're not talking about something that's out of the blue, outlandish. I never heard of it. Uh, uh, you could do this for websites. You could do this for really anything. I mean, anything that the prospect already knows they want. Now, now, if you were trying to sell, uh, um, I don't know, name something somebody definitely doesn't want. Uh, uh, well, I used the idea of dog poop in a little bit. Dog poop colored, you know, dog poop shaped ice cream. So, so. <laughs> chocolate fire guard. <laughs> you're trying to sell chocolate fire guards. That's Pete. Then yeah, maybe you're going to have a tough time because nobody on the planet wants that thing. I got it. But we're not selling something that nobody on the planet works, wants. We started with something that all businesses should want, that many, many of them already do want. And that means that if you religiously prospect, you cannot screw this up because Every few sales presentations, whether it's two or three or five or 10 that drop out of this process, you're going to be picking up that blue marble. They're going to basically be saying, uh, hey, yeah, yeah, look, man, I really need this. Uh, how much you, you know, like in the middle of the sales presentation, uh, how, how much you charge for this? You know, well, I charge, you know, uh, $300 for the initial setup and, you know, $500 a month and whatever. Um uh, they're going to just say yes because because they need it. They're more in the position of somebody who has a toothache going to a dentist than they are somebody who never heard of something and decided and, and, and at least decided to hear what you had to say about the thing that they never heard. And then they're just kind of thinking, hey, you don't really need that, right? Okay, we're looking for the people with the toothache and you're the dentist. Okay. Oh, Liam, thank you so much. I got to read that one out. 
get into a Chamber of Commerce event, amen, and get 100 business cards per event, bam, okay? And I was just using little numbers because I wanted to prove to you guys that with little bitty numbers, <laughs> this is huge. Now, two things. The only way to screw this up is to not do it, number one. Uh, that really is the only way to screw it up. And again, look, I know, I know. You don't know what to do with emails. You don't know what I meant. You know, some of you probably figured out, but you don't know what I meant by a different type of autoresponder. You don't know what I mean by the um, Nick doesn't, I mean, Nick may know what to do. I, I'm not picking on you, Nick, but but I'm saying Nick raised the question of uh, um, not knowing what to do with, you know, with the sales process and all this stuff. I, I, I got it. There's more to this thing, which is why offline marketing is, it's so much better than strict online marketing because the numbers are actually in your favor, but it does take more skill to do, which is why you guys are on webinars with me all the time, right? So here's the deal. Now, now they'll prove the numbers to you. Got lots of great comments coming through here. And we're going to have a little wrap up Q and a in a little bit and we'll, we'll, you know, make sure I got everybody covered on everything. Prospecting not to make a sale, but to build a list prospecting like you okay you run a business now this is what you need how you need to think about it you must hire yourself to prospect because ain't nobody else going to do it right uh we'll talk about different kind of autoresponder i'm talking about marketing automation as opposed to uh, uh just regular everyday autoresponder like a weber but uh um Use a different kind of autoresponder and a different email process to different. All we want to do is just differentiate differentiate those who are engaged from those who aren't. And we're just going to follow up the ones who are in some very, not passive, but very non-salesy, non-threatening ways. And we're going to let come of it what may, because if you do this consistently, the numbers are going to get so freaking big that you can't screw it up. And, and really, guys, 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 that's all you need. I know, I, look, you're selling Google My Business stuff. There are like a zillion businesses out there that need it. Uh, I've already proven that to you in various webinars and emails and shown you videos and all that stuff. You, you know there's a huge need for this. And really, all you got to do is stoke the funnel. That's all you got to do. It was like when I was a little kid, we did not have gas heat. We had a, a coal furnace for heat, and uh, which is kind of cool. But the coal furnace had like this big thing in front of it that was, uh, God, it was called a hopper. Yeah. And uh, and when it's real cold in the middle of the night, somebody in the house would have to get up about two or three in the morning, go downstairs, get the shovel and put sh shovel coal into the hopper. Okay. And the hopper would then have this big screw thing that would screw the coal into where the furnace was and burn it, stoking the furnace. That's all you got to do is stoke the furnace. All you got to do is stoke the front end. All you got to do is keep collecting the business cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick the, Nick says a matter of reveal uh, during the webinar what autoresponder we should be using. I'm going to tell you the type of autoresponder. I'm going to show you one of mine. I, I have, like, for different businesses, I, I have a, a ton of them. But I'm going to show you uh, one of mine, okay? Uh, just show you some stuff. So, yes, absolutely. I'm not going to leave you hanging on that. This, I mean, guys, I mean, you know, I mean, this is the way I've personally been doing this for a really long time, but, but this like makes sense. You know, the, the, the how to run the business is sort of baked into the, baked into it. And all you got to do is just get in the car every morning, get on the Metro, get on the subway, get on the tube and uh, go, go see a bunch of people in network meetings and take the business cards and pop them into the front end. If you're really smart. Uh, pick up a Chamber of Commerce meeting, like where I live. You know, Atlanta is an amalgam of many different counties and uh, many different little cities that grew together over time. And all of those guys have their own Chamber of Commerce. My God, I must be surrounded by 30 Chambers of Commerces. Well, yeah, prob probably about 30. So, you know, what that means is that I could hit a Chamber of Commerce almost every week. Now I'm really up in my numbers because we use the example of going to a Chamber of Commerce meeting and getting 100 business cards per meeting. 
but see, see, we can do this now because when we go to the Chamber of Commerce meeting, pick up all those hundred business cards, we don't, we don't do stupid stuff like we all do, like take them home and put them in a drawer. Who <laughs> here besides me woke up one day and realized they had a drawer full of like zillions of business cards. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. A number of you. So, um, uh, Nick, great, great question. Let, 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 let's hit that a little later. Just uh, not, it's wonderful. Not, you're asking wonderful questions. Thank you so much. But let's let that be a and a question. Um, yeah, I mean, the business cards do nothing for you in the drawer, but, but the whole reason they're in the drawer is because really, ultimately, you did not know what to do with them. You knew you should get them. And you tried to get them, you know, you spent some time and then, then you got a bunch of them and you, they're sitting there in the drawer because you don't know what to do. I'm telling you what to do. All right. So that those business cards turn into an asset for your business. Let's talk about this a little more. I think I've kind of, you know, I, I just get excited and just kind of, you know, get ahead of the slides. I think I pretty well covered that part. What I mean by that, what are the benefits? Yeah, another benefit, another huge benefit, I'll make this real clear to you. Another huge benefit of prospecting not to make a sale, but to get people on a list is humans do not just communicate on a conscious level. Okay. We do, we, we, there's our eyes, our ears, you know, you've all read all this neuroscience stuff probably or run into it in various places, how our brains are filtering out a lot of information from us because we're fundamentally hunters. We're, we're hunter gatherers, right? And we don't need really to know everything. We just need to know the important things. And so somebody's talking, the other person thinks they're just listening to the words, but really they're watching the posture really their eyes are picking up on the skin tone and the and, and the color. Really, uh, hang on, I want to see what Pete said because this is going to be good. Yes, Pete, who is a retired uh, policeman from the UK, body language is taught a lot in the police to identify as if the person is telling the truth. Amen. So, you know, we all get these gut feelings about people. And, and, and when Pete learned to really understand body language, basically what that course was telling him more, more or less was how to take that gut feeling and bring it up to a conscious level so he could actually apply it all the time, right? But whether it's conscious or not, uh, we all, all human beings pick up on all this stuff. I don't, you know, I'm not a neuroscientist. I don't want to be a neuroscientist, but you got to agree with me that we are picking up on a massive amount of information from other people that is uh, not just the words. And if you're there, if you're at a network meeting to make a sale, or if you're talking to someone to make a sale, okay, but especially if you're prospecting, that's why you don't want to confuse prospecting with selling. Because if you're prospecting and you have, you yourself have the same stance as a person trying to make a sale, a lot of those other people pick up on it. And they don't know why. And they wish they didn't. But they just really just kind of not getting into you. They don't quite like you. There's like, why? Well, I don't know what it is, but you know, hey, that guy called me. I don't know if I want to talk to him because there's some, it's a stress thing. There's some stress involved. You had extra stress. Okay. And so when they feel that, look, everybody goes to network meetings, everybody goes to chamber of commerce meetings. They don't go to just raise their hands and say, hey, hi, hi, how you doing? Look how well I'm dressed and I'm, I'm great. People don't do that. They go there because ultimately they want more business. They are all salespeople. Okay. So there is the potential in those meetings that the other person talking to you has in their mind, like 100% of the time, I, they, that person wants to make a sale, which means that my natural resistance to having someone else get me to do something that I may or may not want to do starts to go up, right? My armor, I put on my armor, right? I start listening in a different way. I start agreeing, but in my head, I'm not really agreeing, that kind of stuff. But if you are going to the network meeting just to collect cards, to press the flesh, to look cool, 
to look like a player, to you know, have a nice smile, to be a gentleman, to be a lady, to make a good first impression and to collect a freaking business card. If that's all you're doing, you're not going to give off these sublim subliminal messages and their sales resistance isn't going to go up as much, which means that as you prospect to them over time via your new autoresponder type thing that we're going to get into next week, they are going to be more receptive from hearing from you because instead of, oh God, it's that person calling me from the network meeting. I know they, you know, instead of that, I, my, I don't have this great of a feeling. They're going to think, oh, it's Sally. Cool. Well, I met Sally last week. Sally's pretty cool. I wonder what she's up to. Hey, Sally, how are you doing? Yeah, this is Lee. Super. Well, yeah, cool. Yeah, I got a couple of minutes. What's up? You know, they're going to be so much more receptive. Because their armor's not up, their 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 psychology it's it's a protection mechanism, and and it's it's there for a reason, but their psychological armor is not up. Okay, so three ways, to, um, three of the best ways to do this. I didn't cover the middle one because I don't talk about it too much because no one's ever going to do this except for me. Hey guys, I built multiple businesses cold calling. I'm just laying that out there. <laughs> Pros cold call. Okay, I'm just saying. But anyway, network meetings, cold calling, and LinkedIn. Okay? So if you live out on a ranch like 100 miles away from anybody else in Montana, then, uh, yeah, you're going to have to use LinkedIn. Uh, I said I was going to talk about LinkedIn in a minute. The only deal with the online method versus actually talking to real people like we always have in sales is that your numbers are going to have to be massively you can you can capitalize all those words in the word massively, massively bigger. Okay, they're just going to have to be massively bigger. I'm sorry, it is what it is. It's just the way it is because it's too easy for people to blow you off online. Okay, that's really the only difference. But you know, again, if you, I've never been to Montana. I, I hear it's an incredibly beautiful place. So it may be worth living on a ranch, on a, like a horse ranch out in the middle of Montana. The weather, the, the, the winters are hell. But maybe you want to live there. Maybe you want to look at the beautiful mountains while you're sitting there uh, using LinkedIn. Hello, six hours a day, six prospecting, not one, not 30 minutes. Not let me stick my toe in the water and see what the water's like. Not, not any of that crap. Because remember, you hired yourself to prospect. And if you don't prospect, you're sorry, your rear end's going to get fired in about a New York second, right? That kind of attitude, this is my job. I am I am the prospector, okay? Then, you know, so maybe that would be worth it to you. Or if you already live in a place where there are not a ton of folks, then yeah, and you're stuck. And I'm not saying move, I'm, I'm just pointing that out, okay? That's the only time... That's the only time I would use LinkedIn over network meetings and Chamber of Commerce meetings if you can do enough of those to get to the kind of numbers we're talking about. But I use pretty baby numbers for the size of my meetings. And, uh, uh, you know, everybody can do this. I mean, you know where to find network meetings, right? I'm guessing. BNI, meet up, and don't stress out about what kind of meeting. Okay, look. Uh, if it's like a, a, a meeting about meditation, okay, those, okay, so maybe that's not like a fit. But if it's a meeting about how to buy houses and flip them, which, yes, is not really a fit, that would be worth going to anyway. So, so, so don't, don't get all OCD about the meeting. Well, believe the meeting's not exactly like, you know, it's not my target market. Nobody cares about it, whether it's your target market. Go to a freaking meeting that's kind of sort of in the ballpark of business stuff. Collect a bunch of business cards, put them in your freaking uh, autoresponder, and then and 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 then go to another meeting this afternoon and do it like that. Okay. Look at what you need to get going with us. And again, details next week because you know I've talked to Blue Streak. We've been going for quite a while here, and I deeply appreciate your time. And I hope this has been uh, worth it for you. But. Um, uh, what you need to get going with this. Bam. If you're going to do the LinkedIn thing, all right, if you're just going to do that, it, look, let me put it to you this way. This is just me, tough love and all that stuff. If you can't, if you can only do that for some reason, like, like you cannot travel, 
or if you could travel there's you're not going to run into another human being if you could only do that for some reason then fine do that it will still work you're just gonna have to do a lot more of it and you can and 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 it's going to take longer just is i'm sorry that's the way it is okay but if you could do LinkedIn, or if you do have the opportunity to go to network meetings or um, uh, chamber of commerce meetings, and you opt to just sit on your rear end, wimping out and doing LinkedIn, you have screwed up banned. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you chose to light a match instead of a bonfire. Okay, it, it just is what it is. I'm so sorry to tell you that. I love LinkedIn. I, I get a massive amount of LinkedIn, but I understand the numbers. I also love network meetings. So squeeze page and lead magnet for LinkedIn. Why? Because if, you know, you, if, if you can reach out to somebody and say, hey, I do this, you know, me, you need your profile straightened out and all that stuff. If you're going to reach out to somebody, hey, I do this cool thing and, and uh, you know, you know, may or may not be, you know, something you're interested in, but if it is, let me know. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'd like to know about it. Cool. Well, listen, uh, here's a link. Just go here. You can uh, download our report all about it. It's prob probably easier. That way you can see if you're interested before we get on the phone. Uh, you know, um, um, uh, maybe maybe one out of 12 people will download, actually down, you know, actually, you know, get on your email list. That's where the big numbers come in, right? That, that slippage right there. And uh, so you're going to need that, right? Because it's going to kind of weird, you know, online and social media say, hey, would you give me your email address so that I can put it in my autoresponder? That, that's a little weird. So you're going to need the first two if you're if you're doing or just doing the LinkedIn thing. You're going to need a special kind of autoresponder, specifically not AWeber. Okay, I, I love AWeber. I have three AWeber accounts, okay? I've been with AWeber for like 12 years or something like that. I'm not hating on AWeber. They are wonderful for what they're good at. And they're not going to be good at what we're going to talk about next week. But you need what's called marketing automation. Now, there's all kinds of marketing automation and all kinds of levels of marketing automation. And you can spend a massive amount of money per month on marketing automation. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you an excellent but not but a solution that won't break the bank. And, you know, I just threw in website. You do not have to have a website, but it might be kind of nice to have a website. Okay. And if you bought Jack's thing, I mean, you already got a website. As a matter of fact, you got a website where somebody can go there and uh, buy training from you. Okay. For what I'm talking about here to integrate Jack's thing with this. Um, so I know that every single person on this call, because I'm guessing, has gone to a squeeze page to get some information that looked really good to you. Put in your uh, email address and your name if it required it. Hit submit. And uh, then as a thank you page, you go to another page where you could buy something, right? Everybody's done, you know, some beginnings of an online sales funnel. Everybody's done that, right? Well, you could take Jack's thing and make it the thank you page. You got me? I would not make it. I would collect the email address first without pressuring someone to buy something. But I would make Jack's thing the thank you page if you want to integrate that into what I'm talking about. So here's the strategy, the steps. Number one, we talked all about how to do this. Get people on your list. Okay. That really should, until you've got a big list, like thousands, 80% um, of your working time should be prospecting. Did you hear that? 80, like 80% 80 of your working time should be prospecting. You email them once a week. Okay, I'm going to give you some good ideas about what to send, how to send it, and and how to do so without being a a world class copywriter or b spending like you know staying up till four o'clock in the morning writing emails. Okay, I'm 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 going to talk about that next week. But you want to email them once a week. These are business people. They're not like okay, you guys are on my internet marketing list, and I email you twice a day. Okay, if I find something really cool, if there are two, two cool things that I think you need to. No, but I'll email you three times a day. But I email religiously twice a day, once at 11 a.m., once at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You probably already figured that out. That's too much for business people. Once a week is not too much, though. Do not get into once a month. That's too little. All right? Your goal with your email list, guys, guys, listen to this. Your goal with your email list is not to never piss off someone. They can always unsubscribe. 
your goal is to sort. The email list does the sorting. So guess who we want to end up on our email list after it's all said and done, the dust is settled, and a few people have unsubscribed. Guess who we want there? We want the people who read our emails. Does that make sense? We want the people who read our emails. We don't really don't want the other ones. We want the process to get rid of them. And unsubscribing is part of that process. Using your autoresponder, and I'm going to show you, uh, um, I'm going to give you like a quick tutorial next week about how to do this. Using your autoresponder, you want to see who's engaged. You want to see who's opening your freaking emails. You want to tag them, uh, perhaps put them on a separate list, but you want to tag them. You want to keep up with them, right? And you want to follow up with those who are engaged. Now, Again, here's, uh, here's a little benefit of network meetings and Chamber of Commerce over, um, over uh, let's say, LinkedIn is you're going to get the person's real phone number. I mean, on LinkedIn, yeah, they got information on their LinkedIn profile. They got their website. And they, a lot of people actually have a phone number. But then that, and it's not a dead phone number. It's just a phone number that goes, it, they're not picking up their cell phone when you call. Let me just put it that way. But if you go to network meetings, if you go to uh, Chamber of Commerce meetings, and and let's say it's an insurance agent that you're talking to, well, hello, they're salespeople. They want to field inbound calls. There's going to be one of those numbers that's going to ring the phone in the person's pocket or purse. Okay? So you want to keep track of that because... When Mary has been opening 80% of my emails for a few weeks, guess what I'm doing? Somebody guess what I'm going to do. When Mary has been opening 80% of my emails for a week or two or three or four, guess what I'm going to do? Somebody tell me, what, what's Lee going to do? Come on, say the right answer. Let's go. I'm in limbo. I can't go ahead until somebody tells me what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah, I had two people say in a different way, you're going to call Mary. Yeah, you're going to call. And it look, it does not have to be like a super salesy call either. That's why we're doing it this way. Hey, Mary, this is Nick. How are you? Super. You know, we met at that uh, 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 network meeting uh um, you know, yeah, yeah, Nick, I've been receiving your emails. Good stuff. Listen, I really, I really like that article about uh, uh, using press releases in businesses. I really appreciate that because we've kind of been thinking about it. And, and the stuff you said about Google on that other email, that, that was pretty cool. I mean, you, you will be talking to people and they will say stuff like this because they're reading your email. Well, Mary, you know, talking about Google My Business, I noticed that you guys have uh, actually done what's called claiming your listing, but you haven't really optimized it. Uh, you're honestly, you're, you're missing out on something. Now think about psychologically what has happened here. Mary met me at the network meeting. I wasn't trying to sell her anything. She had a good feeling about me. I made a fabulous first impression. I wasn't salesy. Her armor didn't go up. She's agreed through her actions to be part of my world, to open my emails. And now I'm talking to her. Do you think she's going to listen to me? I'm not saying she's going to fall all over herself and just, just hand me her life savings. I'm not saying that. But do you think she's going to listen with an open mind and an open heart to what I am saying now? Yes or no? Do you think that? Absolutely. Guys, look, I didn't invent this stuff. I mean, I, you know, I, I did not invent this stuff. I was taught this stuff. Well, I watched my dad do this stuff when I was a little boy, but I was taught this stuff by some really great sales trainers. And then I was taught this stuff in some excellent businesses I worked on. This is how corporate America does this. Okay. You follow up with those engaged and you ask for an appointment. Well, Mary, you know, again, I, I, I noticed you uh, hadn't actually optimized your listing. You know, uh, look, I just called you out of the blue, Mary. You, you may not have a ton of time. Would you like to schedule 45 minutes sometime real quick and, and let me just kind of go over that with you, what what that is and, and uh, you know, what that would be and, you know, get, give you an approximate cost for us doing that for you? 
Do you think that some largish number of people are going to say yes? I mean, I don't care whether it's a majority or minority. Do you think that that phone calls, if you did it that way, do you think that phone calls would be worth making? Do you think that a lot of times you're going to get a freaking appointment out of that? Now, think about psychologically that person's stance, that person's attitude toward you when they get on that freaking appointment. Sure, they know you're going to sell them something, but look, we have established trust here, right? The sales armor, you know, is not up so much. They are listening to you with an open mind and an open heart. I really like Nick. I think he's really trying to help me. I'm pretty sure that we need this. I'm really not sure how much it's going to cost. I do want to hear the details because I'm a responsible business person and I'm just not going to throw money at the wall. Now, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm going to let the guy go through his thing, but, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Do you see how the, do, do you guys understand the massive amount of sales psychology that's baked into this simple system? I hope you do. So, Get people on your list, email them once a week, use your autoresponder and see who's engaged, follow up with those engaged and ask for the appointment. And it's not like I'm, you know, sitting here sweating bullets because we've already got a relationship. All I'm doing is saying, Mary, hey, how you doing? It's great to see you again. Uh, and you could do this on LinkedIn. And, you know, hey, how you doing? It's great to finally, uh, you know, hear, hear the voice behind the face and all that. Wonderful. You know, and you go through the little chit chat that we all go through, just human beings. And then, you know, th then you say, hey, you know, looks like you guys need help with this. I'd, I'd be happy to help you with it. And look, I called you out of blue. I know you're busy. Uh, you want to set up 45 minutes sometime and, and let, let's, you know, let me just run through what this would be like. Guys, you're going to get a lot of appointments. Okay. Don't quit prospecting, but you're going to get a lot of appointments. Now, the secret sauce is in the autoresponder. That, that, that's really the technology that is managing the sorting. And next week, I'm going to talk to you about how to build your email sequence. In other words, what to email and how to do it and how to build the follow-up. In other words, how to follow up. I'm, you know, I've, I've given you the, the, the big overview. And um, uh, next week, and I know I need to fill in some details because you know, I, I don't like just saying, hey, this is a great idea, and I go out and do it because then you got to figure everything out, and then you won't do it and all that stuff. But next week, we're going to get into some more details. Cool beans. I am now done with the presentation part of the webinar, and I'm more than happy for a little Q&A. Uh, don't want to take too much of y'all's time. I deeply appreciate your time. I appreciate your being on my list and being in my world. I deeply appreciate that. I appreciate the opportunity to help you start and build your businesses. Okay, so... Uh, um, so, so I'm not going to sit here and just, you know, yammer on, but if you've got some good questions, you bet Nick, Nick says, thanks Lee for sharing your insights. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for asking so many wonderful questions, but you got your questions, pop them in here and, uh, let me, let, let, let me see if I can, uh, help answer some things. I mean, you know, what's coming next week is, is, is a few more details, but let me see if I can help answer some things. Anybody got any burning questions that they need to know? I'll give you a couple of, uh, I'll scroll down through the comments and see, uh, Colin. Yeah, we're, we are recording this Colin because y'all are on here because you bought a, an, an, a, an, another vendor's product and this is a bonus. I don't have you tagged in any way so that I can just mail the, just mail people like you, people that bought this thing. I, I, I can't just mail you. Okay. So, and, and, in all fairness, I don't want to give it to everybody because that's not fair to you. But anyway, uh, once it's, uh, once I download the recording, I upload it to YouTube. Colin, if you would hit me up in support and just say, Hey Lee, um, Got, for whatever reason, I, I want to see it again. I, I don't care, Colin. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to give you the link, but just, just say, hey, Lee, would you give me the link to the webinar? I missed part of it. Totally cool. I'll just send it to you in support, okay? Let's see what else we got. Uh, Nick says, is it, Nick, I'm going back and looking at a few of your questions. Is it workable for us to hire people from Craigslist to do the prospecting? Yes, I would not do that for a really, really long time because you won't know what they're supposed to do and you won't be able to tell if they're actually doing it. But that, that is certainly possible. 
talked about the autoresponder next week. Uh, oh, tell me about I, I, I This is not a question. It's just a wonderful, wonderful statement of Gary's. This, this is a quote. This Gary, this happens to me all the time. If you talk to people, if you talk to people, you always find business. I talked with the owner of a hair salon while one of my one of her team cut my hair and came out with a website, social media management, and an app. Luck. I don't know if it's luck, Gary. It's really just you having enough sense to be um, to be out there prospecting. You know, yeah, you didn't get your hair cut because you needed a sale, but you had enough sense to talk while you. And this, this happens to me all the time, Gary. So this is awesome. A uh, bunch of people talking about our numbers, which apparently I screwed up. But I, I, you know, the big picture is still the same. Uh, and yeah, talking about the autoresponder next week. I think we're pro oh here I got some more questions. Pizza is excellent. Will you run through the process to follow next week when using Google My Business Product? Jack is using yeah yeah guys. I I may actually forget to do that. So Pete, remind me. Okay, I'll try to remember to put that in the slides for next week. But if I forget, I'm happy to do it. Okay. And uh, using the Google My Business by the way of LinkedIn. So next week, we're going to talk about how to use Jack's product, how to do this via LinkedIn. Uh, my support email address, I'll get that for you, D-Lynn, or, or Dave, I think it's Dave that's on Dave in a second. Uh, thank you, Colin. That's awesome, buddy. So uh, hang on just a second. Let, let me go over here and find some stuff. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I do know. But it's easier to copy and paste <laughs> my support email address than it is to try to give you just copy. So hang on, guys. Let me put it. Dave, I'm putting it in the chat. There, it's available. That link is available now to everyone in the audience. So all of y'all on your end should have seen that. And Dave, I'm also going to put it as a reply to your specific question, and send it to everybody. So guys, and I forgot who else. Uh, Colin, you needed my support. So there's my support. Okay. So copy that. Use that. Just open a ticket. All right. Gary, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Great info. Good for you doing the daily run, Nick. I, I'm I'm shooting out of here and going to the gym myself. So I, I uh, that that's my next step today. Awesome. So guys, thank you so much. I hope that this uh, helped open you know open your mind, give you more of a. a more of a structured way of dealing with this, okay? And and especially more of a way, more, more of a structure that we put in place where you can just take the structure and implement it. And then over time, you will end up with the business that you want. So thank you so much. Again, thank you for being on my list. Uh, Gary, the day is already over in the UK. And I, 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 I got more than one of my British friends on here. Bye, Nick. Thank you for all the questions and, and, and the interaction. So thank you guys. And uh, again, going up on YouTube, you've got the, you bet, buddy. You've got the uh, support links. And, and Colin's from Australia. This is so cool. I've got people all around the globe on here, which I always do, but it still blows my mind. So you got the support link. Just hit me up on there. As soon as I get it up on YouTube, then I will send you the link. God bless you. And I'll talk to you real soon. If not, then if not sooner than this time next week. See y'all later.